In this Blender tutorial, we're going to go over the Extreme PBR2 add-on, and what this does is it quickly lets us apply and switch between PBR materials without messing with any nodes. So if you don't know nodes or just don't want to spend the time on them, this will really speed up your workflow. And you've already got over 600 2K resolution materials in here, and they come with all the maps you'd expect like Diffuse, Normal, Roughness, Metallic, and most importantly, Displacement. And Displacement is where Extreme PBR becomes extremely useful. We can blend different selections, each with its own displacement map to create terrains entirely out of materials. So all the automatic displacement options are super powerful. And if you want to pick up Extreme PBR2 for yourself, it's available over at the Blender Market, and you can use the discount code CGMATTER, all in lowercase, to get 20% off this add-on. And I should mention that this discount code is only going to be available for the next week, so if you're interested, this is the time to get it. So let's start talking about how this add-on works. When you download the add-on, you're going to get these four files, and here's how you actually install it. The first thing we need to do is create a new folder, and this is where we'll store our material library. We're now going to open the first of these library zip files, and you can do this with WinRAR, 7-zip, or anything else, and all we have to do is extract these contents into the folder that we made. This might take a bit, because like I said, we're dealing with hundreds of materials. And when that's done extracting, we're going to open up Blender and head over to the Preferences in the Add-on section. To install the add-on, just click Install and navigate over to the Extreme PBR zip file. So now just enable this add-on, and for our material directory, just navigate over to the folder that we extracted before and click accept. And basically all we've done here is installed the add-on and defined the directory for our material library. So now when we hit N for properties, you're going to see the extreme PBR tab and you can start using it like normal. So you may be thinking, how do you actually use this add-on? Well, all we have to do is have an object selected like this cube and then open up the extreme PBR tab. And you can see that in our material list, the cube already has a material assigned. And this is just the default material that the cube always has on the startup scene. Above Above this, we have the material selection area, and this is where we choose materials from our library. So I'm just going to remove our default material and choose this cracked asphalt. And as you might expect, all we have to do is hit add new to bring in this new material. But you can see that nothing's actually changed in our scene, and that's because we need to be in the rendered preview. And we can now see the asphalt on our cube, but as we swing around the light, this is all looking very flat. To fix this, go to the choose maps drop down, and you can see that only diffuse is enabled. This means that when we applied our material, we only use the diffuse map, so obviously we're not getting any of the depth we want out of this material. Instead, let's remove the asphalt, enable all the maps, and add it back in. Now this is very subtle, but our material is now responding to this changing light. To make it more obvious, we can go into the material settings and strengthen our normal map and also add in some ambient occlusion. And instantly we're getting something with more depth that doesn't feel nearly as flat. Now remember that one of the maps we imported was a displacement map, and this will actually affect our mesh by deforming the geometry. Of course, the issue here is that our cube only has six faces and we need much more geometry to see our displacement. So in the utility dropdown, we can hit switch mode to toggle into edit mode. Now your next instinct might be to begin subdividing, but when you do this, you'll see that nothing happens. And this is because we always need to specify which vertex group we're acting on. So while all our faces are selected, hit add vertex group and now our subdivision is working. Back in object mode, our cube is now deformed by the displacement map. And if we look at the silhouette of this, it's no longer perfectly flat. We can also change how our cube is shaded by enabling shade smooth, and to get even more control you can enable auto smooth and specify a smoothing angle, and I'm just going to keep it at 30 degrees. To play around with the displacement map, just go down to the display settings drop down. And for example, we can bring up the strength of the displacement, and to fix some of the weird edges we can add some smoothing. And already this is looking much more photorealistic than what we had before. Now something to remember is that the displacement is happening at the material level. This means that if we toggle to edit mode, our mesh is still going to look like a cube. If instead we want to bake this displacement down to the geometry level, all we have to do is hit bake displacement. And now when we go into edit mode, you can see that our mesh has the deformation applied to it. And one more thing to note is that all this works in both the cycles render engine and in Eevee. And the reason why I'm using Eevee in this case is just because it's much faster. If instead we wanted more accurate results, then we would switch over to cycles. Now probably the coolest function of this add-on, other than speeding up your shading workflow, is the ability of using multiple materials, and more specifically multiple displacement maps all on one mesh. So for example, let's swap out this cube for a plane and size it up a bit. And using the same process as before, we want to add in a sandy material with all the maps to this plane. Now something I already want to change about this is the mapping of our material. I want to try to get much more sand inside our plane. And to do this, just open up the UV editor and scale up the UVs of this plane. This works because the materials that Extreme PBR sets up are based in UV texture coordinates, so we can do this with any of the materials in the library. Next, we're going to add this whole plane as a vertex 
group and begin subdividing so there's enough geometry for the displacement. And this is looking a bit jagged, so let's enable smooth shading to get rid of those abrupt transitions. We now want to add in a second material, so in the top view define a selection for this, and I want this selection to kind of look like islands distributed in our sand. Once we're done selecting, let's choose a rocky material from our library and add it in. And so far the plane will still only show the sand material, so to bring in our rocks we need to select the new material and hit assign mat. And just like the name says, this assigns our selected material to whatever selection we have in our mesh. Now at this point something should definitely be jumping out at you as looking very wrong. And what's going on here is our two displacement maps are overlapping and they're not contained in their zones. So when I increase the strength of one of the displacement maps, this ends up affecting our whole plane. So what we need to do is isolate these maps from each other. To do this, toggle to edit mode and while we still have our selection, we're going to add a vertex group in our rocky material. And you can see that this solves half the issue, but we still have the sand displacement spilling over to our rocks. And we can really start to see this when we up the displacement strength. So again, all we have to do with our sand material selected is toggle over to edit mode, invert the selection, and add a vertex group. And now our displacements are isolated and we get this beachy terrain that we can modify all inside Extreme PBR. So changing things like the strength, smoothing, and mid-level all give this scene different types of looks. So you can make a whole bunch of landscapes using very minimal effort. And to clear some of the work we've done here, head over to the Extreme Clean dropdown which gives us a few options. For example, we can only remove our displacements which flattens everything down but still keeps our materials. We can also remove all the materials in the case that you want to start off fresh. The last feature I want to go over is the glass material in this add-on. So let's swap out this cube with the sphere and in the Extreme PBR tab select the glass easy material. We're going to add this in and switch to the rendered preview so we can actually see what's going on. You'll notice that now our sphere is completely transparent and looks nothing like glass. However, this is just because there's nothing in the environment to play off of. So instead of this gray background, we want to switch our environment to any kind of HDRI. To do this, open up the world tab and in our color choose an environment texture. We can then load in any HDRI and immediately we see that our glass material is actually doing something. And to get rid of this disco ball look, all we have to do is enable smooth shading. So now we have this nice glass sphere and to edit the properties of the glass, head over to the glass settings drop down. Here we can make this glass rougher so it looks more frosted, change the index of refraction which you can think of as magnification, play around with the Fresnel, and strengthen our normal map. And there are a bunch of settings here that let us play around with the normal map to get different types of glass. Finally, we can choose a color for this, and I'm going to go with a dark blue. And if we really like our material, what we can do is add in another object, shift click our sphere, and hit copy link to copy over the glass material. And notice that when we change the material color on the sphere, it also updates on the cube. So these two objects are really sharing the exact same material. And of course, just like all the other materials, this is also compatible in cycles. And cycles gives us a much better result, but at the cost of some computation computation time. So those are the basics of the Extreme PBR2 Blender add-on, compatible with both versions 2.8 and 2.79. This is a great solution for anybody who doesn't know how to use nodes or just can't be bothered with them. And you're getting access to over 600 2K materials. So pretty much any photorealistic material you need will be in this library in some form or another. So in this sense, Extreme PBR is a massive time saver for novices and for professionals. Also the displacement map controls are very powerful and can be used to get some very quick, realistic results results. So again, Extreme PBR2 is available at the Blender Market, and over the next week you can use the discount code CGMATTER all in lowercase to get 20% off. But that's all I got for you guys today, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next one.